To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgiveness. Though we have rebelled against him, neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws which he sets before us. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. In everything, make your request known to God in prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Dear people of God, we have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins, and to seek his grace, and through his Son Jesus Christ, we may, we may give ourselves to his service. Let us confess our sins to Almighty God. Please kneel as we say the word of general confession together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbors in thoughts and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate thoughts, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in the newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Please rise as we say the word of glorious together. Glory to God, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Psalm 57 shall be read in Northernate's order. Psalm 57 shall be read in Northernate's order. Be merciful to me, O God. Be merciful. For I come to you for shelter. I will call to God most high, to the God who will fulfill his purpose for me. For I lie amidst ravelling lions, men who teeth are spear and arrows, and their tongue are sharpened sword. They have set a night for my feet, and I am brought low. They have dug a pit before me, but shall fall into it themselves. Awake, my soul, awake, loot and harp, for I will awaken the morning. For the greatness of your mercy reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds.
first lesson for this service is taken from the book of prophet Jeremiah chapter 33 Jeremiah chapter 33 Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time, while he was yet shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it to establish it, the Lord is his name. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and shew thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. For thus said the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the houses of this city, and concerning the houses of the kings of Judah, which are thrown down by the months and by the sword. They come to fight with the Chaldeans, but it is to feed them with the dead bodies of men, whom I have slain in my anger and in my fury, and for all whose wickedness I have hid my faith from this city. Behold, I will bring it hurt and kill, and I will cure them, and I will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth, and I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return, and will build them as at the first. And I will cleanse them from all their iniquity, whereby they have sinned against me. And I will pardon all their iniquities, whereby they have sinned, and whereby they have transgressed against me. And it shall be to me a name of joy, a praise, and an honor before all the nations of the earth, which shall hear all the good that I do unto them. And they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that I procure unto him. Thus says the Lord, Again, there shall be head in this place, which ye say shall be desolate without man and without peace, even in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem that are desolate without man and without inhabitant and without peace. The voice of joy and a voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, and the voice of the bride, the voice of them that say, Praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And of them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. For I will cause to return the captivity of the land, as at the first said the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Second lesson is taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 7. We start to read from verse 36. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, 
a woman in the city which was a sinner. When she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with ears of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisees, which had bidden him, saw it, spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touched him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering, said unto him, Simon, I have someone to say unto thee. And he said, Master, say on, there was a certain creditor which had two debtors, the one owed five hundred pence and the other fifty. And when they had, and when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto, the, unto Simon, See thou this woman, I enter into thine house. Thou givest me no water for my feet, but she hath watched my feet with tears, and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou givest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet, my head with oil. Thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore, I say unto thee, Our sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee, go in peace. This is the word of the Lord.
seated. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we want to welcome us to this service and we pray that the blessing of the Lord shall be our portion in the name of Jesus. I want to use this medium to appreciate the Diocesan Bishop for the privilege he has given unto me to speak the word of God today. We pray that the good Lord will continue to bless your ministry in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. O oh God, our Father, we plead that you speak to us at this moment in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. For our meditation this morning, we shall consider the tea, the call to repentance. The call to repentance. And I would like to take my text from the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ as recorded by St. Luke, chapter 7, verses 37 to 38 and verse 48. Luke, chapter 7, verses 37 to 38 and verse 48. And behold, there was a woman in the city who was a sinner. And when she learned that he was reclining at the table in the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster box of ointment and standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears and kept wiping them with the hairs of her head and kissing his feet and anointing them with the perfume. And he, Jesus, said to her, Your sins have been forgiven. The word repentance is the act of showing that one is sorry for something wrong that he or she has been done and is ready to make amendments. In our text for meditation this morning, it is the account of a woman whose identity was not specified, but she was tagged a sinner. Luke chapter 7, verses 37. She came to Jesus at meat in the Pharisee's house with an alabaster box of ointment to anoint Jesus Christ. The woman was weeping, shedding tears on his feet. Luke chapter 7, verse 38. This was a custom among the Jews. Greeks and Romans. It was a mark of affection and reference. It was practiced by supplicants in making an important request and by conquer people as a token of subjection and obedience. And as a result of what the woman did, she was forgiven of her sins. Luke chapter 7, verse 48. Though the Pharisee that hosted Jesus was not happy with Jesus, believed the woman to be a sinner. But Jesus made him to understand that once the woman has come with penitent heart, her sins had been forgiven. Jesus has the power to forgive us our sins. And like the children of Judah in Jeremiah chapter 33, he's calling us to repentance today. And that is why for our meditation this morning, the theme is the call to repentance. In Jeremiah chapter 33, God promised the children of Judah total restoration if they repent and call upon him. Behold, I will bring to it hurt and healing, and I will heal them, and I will refill to them an abundance of peace and truth. And I will restore the fortune of Judah and the fortune of Israel. And I will rebuild them as they were at first. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 6, 6 and 7. God has been calling man to repentance since the inception of the world. But not all yielded to this divine call. We have many examples of people that yielded to the call of repentance. The first person I would like to put before us is Peter. 
at the lake of Genesaret. In Luke chapter 5, verses 8 to 11. Do you know because he yielded, Jesus made him fisher of men, and he became one of the pillars in God's kingdom. What of Matthew, the tax collector? In Matthew chapter 9, verse 9, when Jesus called him, he followed immediately. Matthew left his ill-gotten business and surrendered all to the master. Today, the gospel is not completed without the man called Matthew, the former tax collector. What of King David? After his sins of adultery with Bathsheba in 2 Samuel chapter 12. Do you know when the prophet of the Lord confronted him? He repented. He repented because he yielded to the call of repentance. And God forgave him. What of Rehab the harlot? In Joshua chapter 6 verses 22 to 25. After her encounter with the people of God, she surrendered her. And eventually, she was listed in the book of Generation of Jesus in Matthew chapter 1, verse 5. What of Saul on his way to Damascus? He yielded to the call of repentance. Act of Apostles chapter 9, verses 19 to 22 gave us account of Saul's repentance. And Saul became a giant in the kingdom's assignment. And his story was changed for good. People of God, do you know our God is still calling? Are you willing to yield to this call of repentance? Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is nearer. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord, and he will have compassion on him and to our God. For he will abundantly pardon him. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6 to 7. With the privilege of repentance offered by God, yet many neglected this precious opportunity. For example, Adam and Eve, in Genesis chapter 3, did not repent before God passed judgment upon them. And as a result of that, they brought curses upon their land. Genesis chapter 3, verses 17 to 19. And finally, God sent them out of the Garden of Eden. What of Reuben in Genesis chapter 35, verse 22? He went and lay with Biha, his father's concubine, and Israel heard about it. But there was no single record that he repented or begged for forgiveness. And his father kept quiet about it. Do you know, because he refused to ask for forgiveness or repent, he was caused by his father. Genesis chapter 49, verses 1 to 4. What of King Pharaoh? All through the book of Exodus chapter 4 to chapter 13, he was busy troubling the children of Israel. God even placed ten plagues on him. Yet he failed to repent. On the perish in Urel 6, Exodus chapter 14. The children of Israel failed to repent in time. That was why they were taken to Babylon and they spent about four, 70 years in exile. And that was why, in our first lesson today, God is calling them to repentance. Jeremiah chapter 33. King Saul failed to repent in time, despite all the warnings from God and the Later, he perished at the battlefield in 2 Samuel chapter 1. Judas failed to repent properly after he betrayed Jesus. He finally became a suicide product. Matthew chapter 27, verses 1 to 5. What of Gias and many people like that? In which aspect has God been calling you to repentance? And you remain adamant. Today is another opportunity. Kindly yield. Tomorrow may be too late. As we approach another lengthy season, let us repent from our sin so that God can bring us time of refreshment from heaven. 
Psalm 57, verses 3 to 4. I also call on our leader in government. It is high time we repent from corruption, nepotism, tribalism, affliction of the masses, and rigging of election, even as we prepare for another presidential election. The Church of God is not left out. We must also repent from our law for materialism and neglect of the Great Commission. If you fail to repent now, there are problems ahead. Repentance is not negotiable. We are nearer to the end sooner than we all started. And this do. Knowing the time that is already the hour for you to awaken from your sleep. For now salvation is nearer to us than when we believe. The night is almost gone and the day is at hand. Let us therefore lay aside the deed of darkness and put on armor of light. Let us behave properly as in the day, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual promiscuity and sensuality, not in strife and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh in regard to his laws. Romans chapter 13, verses 11 to 17. Let us pray. O God, our Father, please grant us grace to lay aside every weight that hinder us from following you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and heart, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the community of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on heart as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread 
and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers. And do your ministers with righteousness. O Lord, save your people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. O God, make clean our hearts within us. The collect for this Sunday and other collects. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the Redeemer of all who trust in you, give heed to the cry of your people. Deliver us from the bandage of sin, that we may serve you in perfect freedom and rejoice in your unfailing love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. O Lord, the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom stands our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, your humble servants, in all last thought of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant us this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by your governance, to do always what is righteous in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Beloved, we shall continue in our prayer for the Church of God, our country Nigeria, and other prayers. The Lord be with you. Let's pray. Lord of all power and might, you are the author and giver of all good things. Graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us through religion. Nourish us with all goodness and of your great mercy Keep us in the same as we believe that you will use our primate, Henry, and our bishop, Babatode, to achieve your aim in this end time concerning your church. These are many more we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, the giver of all that is good and the ruler of all that is perfect. We bless you. We give you glory. We appreciate your faithfulness upon our country, Nigeria. We ask you to inspire the people of this land with the spirit of justice, truth and love, so that in all our dealings with one another, we may show that together we are one in you for the sake of jesus christ our lord O lord and governor whose glory is in all the world we commend this nation to your merciful care that being guided by your providence we may dwell secure in your peace grant to the president muhammadu the president of this nation the governor of this state Dapo and to all in authority, wisdom and strength to know and to do your will. Fill them with love of truth and righteousness, and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve the people in your fear. Through Christ our Lord. God, our refuge and strength, you have bound us together in a common life. Help us in the midst of our conflict and confusion 
to confront one another without hatred or bitterness, to listen for your voice amid competing claims, and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect through Jesus Christ our Lord. Be thou exalted, O God, above all the heavens, and let your glory be over all the hearts. We beseech thee, merciful God, to be merciful to us. Be thou our shelter, and in the shadow of your wings, be thou our refuge until all these confusion troubles that we are facing presently pass over us. Send help from heaven and save our land. Keep our feet from falling into the trap of the enemy of our peace. Sustain us and make our joy overflow in you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Beloved, let us present our request to the Lord with faith that he will answer us. And as we are asking God what we want him to do for us, let us also commit the journey of 40 days of trusting God and waiting in His presence. That will be starting this Wednesday, this Ash Wednesday, that God of heaven and heart will journey with us. The journey will be peaceful as we are starting it. We'll be starting it together. We will also see the end of it. Let's pray that God will be our guide and guide. He will see us through this period we are starting this week. Lord, in your mercy, Almighty God, you have given us grace to bring before you with one accord our common supplications, and you promise that when two or three are gathered together in your name, you will grant their request. We feel now, Lord, the desires and petition of your servant as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the world to come the fullness of eternal life. Let's say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. this offering brought by your people. Father, bless your people in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray the blessing of the Lord will locate you in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever you lay your hands upon this week, the Lord will bless you. You will not walk in vain in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, direct, sanctify, and govern our acts and bodies in the ways of your Lord and the works of your commandment, that under your protection, now and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul through Jesus Christ our Lord. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God mighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Please 
rise. Read our Zam memory verse. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Jesus said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creation. We will proclaim. You will proclaim. I will proclaim. <laughs>